This week's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Great. Doing something a little bit different today. I've come up to an area uh, somewhat South Island, I guess South Vancouver Island, called Mount. Now I'm gonna, I know I'm going to butcher this. <laughs> it's called Mount Salesman. Salesman. I'll leave. I'll leave the name up in the corner here. Uh, it's a pretty popular area for mountain biking, I believe, and hiking. But there's also a, an ecological reserve up here because the trees and the, and the wildflowers up here are, are, are really quite special. Um, there's a lot of Gary Oak in this area, which are quite spindly, but they're very similar to the, uh, the oaks up at uh, Little Mountain, which I've done videos of. If you haven't seen those, I'll leave a link up in the corner here or in Nanus. And uh, they generally grow in drier areas. And there's, all, there's also a lot of Arbutus up here. But what I've come up here uh, to photograph today are the, the wildflowers. And I've, I've hit them just at the right time. They're absolutely spectacular. Now, these little white flowers I, I know as uh, white fawn lilies. Erythronium, I'm not sure what the other Latin name is. Um, but there's also quite a few... Uh, shooting stars in here as well. So uh, I've decided to do some close-ups. Now today rather than bringing the Fuji GFX 100 uh, I've decided to bring my trusty old Nikon D850. It's just easier to deal with when it comes to close-ups. The, the Fuji GFX is not great for close-up photography unless of course you have the uh, some of the extension tubes, which I do have one, uh, the macro lens would come in really handy as well because the lenses don't, they don't really focus that close. Whereas the 70 to 200 with the Nikon that I'm using, I mean, you can, you can focus really close with it. I used to have a 200 millimeter macro lens, uh, but I sold that quite a few years ago now because uh, I just, I hardly ever used it and it's an expensive lens. So I decided uh, that I could use the money for something else. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. The weather is not great today. It's kind of off and on rain and it's a little bit windy. Although having said that, it has calmed down. So it's probably not a bad idea to try and get some compositions before the rain comes back. The only thing is I, I really do miss the, uh, the angle finder on my old GFX 100. Uh, it's just so handy to, to look through. That's the problem with uh, these panels. I mean, they're great, but um, you have to wear glasses. Well, I have to wear glasses and uh, it's just a big pain, <laughs> pain. So, uh, but you know, the other thing uh, that I've noticed about this is uh, if I want to do a vertical, uh, this Nikon D850 doesn't have, the panel doesn't kind of go vertically. You can't flip it vertically. So uh, it's a little bit harder to, to deal with. I guess I shouldn't complain too much because it, it's a pretty damn good camera. <laughs> but, uh, oops. So what I'm trying to find here is kind of, um, I guess it's kind of a bit of a, a dreamy quality to the photographs. I'm shooting everything with a, a, 
a really wide open aperture or close to wide open. So 5.6 f4, 4.5 around there. And uh, I'm just pinpointing on individual flowers. And then I'm trying to find nice foregrounds where the color kind of blends in or is blurry. You, you can kind of see that perhaps it's another flower in the foreground, but it's not detailed enough to, to interfere. So we have this wash of color and then you'll have one individual flower or perhaps two or three that are in sharp focus. So right now I'm concentrating on a couple of uh, little uh, shooting stars that are pink and I'm shooting through the, uh, the lilies here to get that wash of white and then with the green. The nice thing about using a, a relatively long lens is that uh, you know you have a really shallow depth of field. So I'm shooting at 200 millimeters and uh, I'm able to get quite close to these small flowers. So yeah, it's really good. Right, I'll show you what I have uh, and you can kind of scrutinize it. All right, I'm really glad that I, uh, I brought my mat today. I usually keep it in my camera bag all the time. It's nice to sit on if you're having a drink or a lunch or doing stuff like this. All right, so this is the composition that I have. And uh, as you can see, I've really tried to blur out all of this stuff around the outside. And uh, the only thing that's a little bit disturbing is, is at the top right here, there's a bit of a lily poking in that's a bit sharper than I would like. What I could do is just carefully just uh, move it out the way with a stick, just kind of push it back a little bit so it goes out of focus. But yeah, I think it's a pretty good start. Hopefully we can find a few more. It's quite difficult trying to get down really low and, and uh, find compositions uh, because if you, if you do everything from eye level, then it's definitely really difficult to find compositions. You have to get down low and shoot across. And, and the thing is with these lilies, uh, the stamens and everything are yellow, but they they hang down, like they're hanging down. They're not hanging up, um, or pointing up, should I say? So uh, if you really want to get those stamens, then you really have to get low. Sometimes you have to shoot up into them. is uh, proving to be a bit of a, a bit of a challenge. So I, I think I found uh, another uh, shooting star. I think I prefer this image over the last one. They just look really, um, there's two kind of pointing downwards and uh, a little bud that's just about to come out. And I, I've managed to isolate them, I think, really, really well. Um, actually, why don't I, uh, I'll show you with a bit of video here. I'll just put this up next to the, and I got an ISO 5.6. It won't be exactly the same, but it's, it's pretty close. So let's just record this. And, uh, as you can see, the, uh, there's a couple of really great little, uh, shooting stars. Oh, it's so awkward though, getting down here, because I, once I've set up this composition, I don't want to take my camera off to have a look at the picture because uh, it's so hard to, to maneuver. But uh, I think it's going to work. Once again, I'd like to thank Squarespace for supporting my channel and sponsoring this week's video. 
One of my favorite features of a Squarespace website is the ability to quickly and efficiently update a gallery or page either from a desktop computer or while on the fly using the Squarespace app from my mobile device. Loading multiple images onto a page is quick and offers the ability to change a design or page quickly and elegantly without any coding knowledge. Want to sell your products? No problem. Setting up shop is also quick and intuitive. Sound interesting? Why not head over to squarespace.com and try it for free. And if you like what you find, use the code Adam Gibbs for 10% off your first purchase. Wow, this is really exciting. I just found um, a bunch of uh, Calypso orchids that grow in kind of the uh, fallen leaves and sticks and stuff. I haven't seen them for a while. They're, they're quite common in the woods, but uh, they're really pretty. Uh, they're very small. They're about the size of the, uh, the shooting stars. But what I'm trying to do here is uh, put some green foliage uh, in front here to try and blur everything out because otherwise you know if there's too much busyness around them then it, it's a, a little distracting. The other thing that I'm trying to do is because I'm shooting at a, a wide open aperture trying to keep the back of my camera parallel to the two flowers. So the two flowers are on their own plane so if you can imagine, say, having one finger here and then one finger there, well, if you're, sh if you're shooting at f4 or 4.5 or 5.6, then ideally, if you want to get both of those things in sharp focus at a, a shallow uh, depth of field, then you want your camera back to be parallel to those two objects, if that makes sense. So... If, uh, say, this one was back here like this, and you're shooting at four, f4, then obviously if you focus on the front one, that one's going to be sharp, but this one won't. So the only way you're going to be able to get them both sharp is by moving your camera around so that it's parallel with the two uh, subjects. And that's kind of what I've done here. It's uh, very, very pretty. Um, it's a little windy. And the sun has come out now, which is, which is okay because we're kind of in the dappled light here and I'm photographing uh, close-ups anyway. So you can kind of control the light a little bit with using your body as a shadow or if you want to reflect some light back in there, you could probably find a reflective uh, object of some sort. Like I, sometimes they use a filter case or, or something like that to, just to put light back into the subject. All right, this is turning into a, a little bit of a challenge. The, uh, the light... I mean, it's, there's a cloud in front of the sun right now, but uh, the clouds are getting less and less and it's getting more and more sunny, um, which is not a problem with uh, this close-up, like I said before, but the problem is that uh, the wind has really picked up. So what I'm having to do here, if I can find it, is I have a, a little device on this uh, that has a, a shutter release called Unleashed, so I can control the aperture and, and all the functions on the camera just through an app. Uh, as far as the wind goes, I've I decided to put my pack in front of the flowers to block the wind, and it seems to be, seems to be working pretty good. So it's really handy if you have a, a shutter release of some sort, either a cable one or uh, one on your phone when it's windy like this because you kind of have to wait for lulls and then fire off the shutter. If you're on a two second uh, timer, then often it doesn't work because it might be calm. You press the button, two seconds elapse and then the wind picks up again. So, so I just got to wait for the, the wind to die down. And Bob's your uncle, works pretty good. Uh, this close-up photography though, I don't know, I, uh, <laughs> I haven't done it for a while and I think the hardest part is, is getting up and down again. <laughs> I'm getting too old for this. <laughs>
Last time I was here was probably about 20 years ago, and that was the ecological reserve, which is quite a small area down the trail a little bit. I don't think Gavin and I ever came here. Um, talking of his lordship, he, uh, he got in touch with me the other day. I think he misses me, which is really strange. Uh, so we got to talking and um, we've decided to put together a video series called Gibson Hardcastle. Now, if you ask him, he, he'll call it Hardcastle and Gibbs, but I want to call it Gibson Hardcastle. Regardless, uh, if you're interested in checking it out, I'll leave a link down below and you can check out uh, our new website and, uh, and uh, you'll find some information about the projects that we're, uh, we're hoping to work on. All right. Okay, so um, the, the conditions are not ideal, mainly because of the light, but we can control the light somewhat. And what I'm doing here is, so I've I found a nice clump of uh, shooting stars here. And what I try to do is pinpoint a particularly nice one that has a nice shape, uh, or a nice color or, or whatever. And then I will back off from that flower and shoot through the clump. So the flower I'm actually photographing is this one here. And then there's a great clump of flowers right here. So I'm shooting right through them. And then what I'll do is I'll handhold the camera, try and find a composition and then set up my tripod now, as I said, the light is a little bit harsh. So what I'm going to do is, is take some photographs in this light. Now, because it's a shallow depth of field, there won't be an awful lot of contrast. The image will more or less be concentrating just on those flowers with a bit of color in there. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll try some different uh, things to try and control the light a little bit. So I've got my app open here so I can control my camera from my phone here. It's a little awkward. It would have been better if I'd had some kind of uh, reflector or scrim with me, but I didn't bring one. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'd like to... I like the light through these uh, flowers here is okay, but what I'd like to try and do is uh, shade the, uh, the flowers in the background, the main subject. So maybe what I'll do is use this. The other problem is, is that I don't want to be tromping through the flowers here to try and shade it. So I have to kind of shade it from the, from the trail here. Something like that. All right, let's try that. And of course I have to make, wait for the wind to die down. You know, why is this not working? Oh, helps if you turn the camera on. <laughs> I've got batteries in there. I think I've got a card in there too. That really helps as well. <laughs> All right. We'll just wait for the wind to die down a little bit. Uh, you need, you, you almost need like three hands for this. Four would be better, or even an assistant. So if anybody wants to be my assistant and uh, work for free, get in touch. <laughs> All right. Okay, we took a bunch of shots there. Now what I'm gonna do is shade, let's shade the foreground, see what happens there. So we're shading the foreground, but the, the main subject is, has light on it. And then the last but not least, we'll shade the whole thing. Um, probably the best way to do that is <laughs> go like this. There we go. All right, and I'll show you the results uh, right now.
the main subject is in the shade. It's uh, being shaded by um, a tree. But this is an, a neat opportunity. So I'll take some shots with uh, it in shadow. And I think it's a bit too dark. Now I don't have anything to reflect light, but I do have this Thermarest uh, bum pad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to reflect. Now you have to be careful you don't put it behind. You don't, you don't want it in the background, but I'm gonna reflect some orange light in there and uh, see if that works. It looks quite good from here. That's the thing with light, you can reflect pretty much anything. Uh, if you have a piece of card or uh, what I was gonna use was the, just one sec there. Uh, I also have this Shimoda uh, filter bag. Let's see if we can probably reflect light with that too. It's going to be a bit more subtle. So as you can see, you can pretty much use anything with close-ups, whatever you have, have at uh, a hand. That will work as a, some kind of reflector. Or even better, carry one, uh, either a shop-bought one or one that you've made. I'm done for the day. You know, I've been here for five or six hours and I think I've taken like four images. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not really sure what I've been doing. A lot of wandering around, that's for sure. Uh, I do find this type of photography really satisfying, uh, but it is a bit of a challenge. Not so much finding subject matter, it's just because I like to get down low to the, the flowers level, uh, finding compositions can be a little tricky because it's all about moving a few centimeters one way or another way to get the right composition. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. It's always appreciated. If you're new to my channel, uh, be sure to check out some of my other videos. And if you enjoy those, then be sure to hit that subscriber button. Lastly, uh, my zine or book, Antarctica, is well on its way. Should be out within the next week or two. I do have all the information on my website. So if you want to go and check that out, I'll leave a link up in the corner here. All right, folks, thank you ever so much. And until next week, bye-bye.